So can you uh, stop sharing the screen and we are going to start the formal meeting. Asker sir, can you start? So can you uh, stop sharing your screen and we are going to start the formal meeting. In group, just You you just need your for input. No, I need forward right now. Just a minute. Yeah. Sir, can we uh, start the program? Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, why don't you stop sharing the screen so that we will start the formal program? Our dean oh. sir is already yes joined. Okay, just hold it. Oh, just hold it. just give me a second to it. Okay, done. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, so respected uh, Dean of our college, Professor Dr. B. N. Hazarika, Dean, College of Horticulture and Forestry, and Nodal Officer of IDP Nahe Project, Institutional Development Plan. And uh, Nahe Project is a World Bank funded project through ICAR. So this project is basically for students and the staff for the institutional development by and large for the students community to go for a startup and now uh, as a part of um, a training program to it's for both the teachers and for the staff graduate students who yeah. are doing msc and phd and the teachers uh, to write to the to publish the scientific journals and so on so it's a part of program so i welcome all of uh, you and i welcome uh, professor Askar ali for this he's a speaker and now i'll give time to the organizing secretary uh, uh, co-organizing secretary and uh, coordinator dr yen surbina devi she will be delivering the welcome address dr surbina Good morning, everyone. Today, ITP Neher CHFCA Pasigat, we are organizing the seventh webinar, or one day webinar, uh, on the developing the habit of thinking and writing the scientific paper. And this has been organized uh, especially for the, our uh, research scholars, faculties, and scientists. And we hope that it will help us in produce our scientific paper in high rated journals, as well as it will help us to increase our citations. So today, I, on behalf of the organizing committee, I would like to welcome a respected Dean of the College, College of Horticulture and Forestry, TAU Pasigat, Professor B.N. Hazarika, sir, and as well as sir is a Northern Officer, IDP Naheb, CHA Pasigat, and also a chairman of this webinar. Welcome, sir, and uh, thank you for joining with us. And I, feel, I also feel honored to welcome Professor Asghar Ali, sir, uh, from the University of Nottingham, uh, Malaysia campus, Malaysia. Welcome, sir, and appreciate you joining with us, sir. Thank you, sir. And uh, with us, uh, sir, we'll deliver a, fu uh, a first lecture in first session. And uh, uh, I will also like to welcome Dr. Muhammad Wasim Siddiqui, assistant professor and uh, scientist from Bihar Agriculture University, Sabur, India. Sir, will deliver a second lecture in second session. And I also appreciate you joining with us, sir and uh, the most important and it's my pleasure to extend my warm welcome to all the participants from various parts of the country and so let's grab this opportunity to interact with our two special today's speakers from professor asgar ali as well as from dr uh, wasim sir 
And uh, there is a humble request from organizing committee to all the participants that please be attentive in all the sessions. And if you have any doubt, any queries, then you can drop your questions in question and answer box. Um, and I hope that you all will have a great time ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Surmina Devi, co-organizing secretary and coordinator of this seventh webinar. Um, before uh, going further, I would say that all the participants, uh, we are live on uh, YouTube and the YouTube link will be shared through your WhatsApp as well as on the mail which you have regi registered. And uh, so people who are having network problem, you can watch it on the YouTube. And uh, so that is a uh, thing. And now may I request our uh, nodal officer and the Dean of College of Horticulture and Forestry, Professor B.N. Hazarika, sir, to address the participant. Sir. Uh, well, good morning to everyone. Uh, our uh, very dynamic uh, associate nodal officer, Dr. Raja, co-organizing secretary, Dr. Surmina, and uh, very eminent learn speaker today's uh, work, Dr. Azbar Ali Warsi from uh, University of Nottingham, Malaysia Campus, Malaysia and also Dr. Mohammad Wasim Siddiqui from the Bihar Agricultural University for India. Uh, this workshop, first of all, I do welcome all the viewers for this uh, one day workshop on developing habit of thinking and writing scientific research paper. So friends, uh, as you know, in agriculture, a few days, if you want to go ahead, uh, either you have to go for pa Paris or either way, or, or you have to publish. So these two P is very important. Publish and Paris both are important. So uh, keeping in this view, and uh, as you know, under the IDP Nahe program, uh, which is funded by the World Bank, uh, World Bank uh, is going on in the College of Horticulture and Forestry. So under this IDP program, we are conducting a series of this kind of workshop as well as seminar and webinar for last few uh, months. And this is uh, of seventh of this edition. And uh, as you know, today we are choosing very important topic. Uh, as you know, this is a, a habit of thinking and uh, writing scientific paper. Uh, uh, as you know, our uh, PG students as well as PhD students are completing their research work after completing their research work. So they are forgetting the time. So in this regard, this kind of modern lectures will be given by our Bremen professor from the University of Nottingham, Malaysia. As our Wasim uh, ICT uh, uh, from Bihar Agricultural University support will be definitely helpful for them because uh, this is very important for the students, particularly the PG and PhD students. So many a time what happened uh, after submitting the thesis, uh, they are uh, forgetting the uh, publishing of the paper. And many a times, though they are submitting the manuscript, and uh, it is not up to work. So today, by the by the so he's disconnected. Yeah, due to network problem, it is Listen, disconnected. Doctor Ra Raja, can you ask other participants yes. to switch off their webcam? And Mike. Okay. So yeah, because I, this is one of this is one of the reasons. Yeah. I have not given the privilege. Yeah, yeah, I have not given a privilege. Yeah, I'll announce them. All the participants, can you mute your mic as well as the stop video? Yeah. I think due to connectivity problem or Dean sir, 
uh, he will back, I think he'll address. And before going further, I would like to um, announce to the participant. Yeah. Yes. Just a minute. Yes, John. Uh, sir. Dean, sir. Sir, I request you to unmute and speak. Okay, sir. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, sir. Uh, yeah, yeah. Now you okay, can speak, uh, sir. It's uh, all right. Okay, go ahead. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Now I request the resource person to start their uh, presentation. So wish you good luck. Done. Uh, okay, sir. Uh, before. Can Going for, uh, for, yes, sir, yes, yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, we'll start. For the participant, uh, just I'll give a give a couple of announcements. Screen is visible. Screen is visible. Yeah. Uh, dear participant, this is our seventh webinar, and uh, if you see that uh, today we have a uh, two resource person, and one is uh, Professor Askar Ali from University of uh, Nottingham, Malaysia campus, Malaysia, and then another resource person, Dr. Wasim Siti, assistant professor and scientist, uh, Bihar Agriculture University, and. Uh, so there were about more than uh, 622 participants have registered for this program. And uh, if you see this uh, title, Developing Habit of uh, Thinking and Writing Scientific Research Papers. And uh, regarding about this, um, the resource person, Yeah, Professor Askar Ali, he has established as a director of the internationally recognized center of excellence for post-harvest biotechnology at the University of uh, Nottingham. is a global center for post-harvest research with a mandate of reducing post-harvest losses and enhancing self life and nutrition of the fruits and vegetables. His areas of specialization include food system, post-harvest technology, food processing, and food technology, CEPB has contributed substantially to global research on edible coatings for extending the shelf life of fruits and vegetables. And he has led several national and industrial projects worth more than RM 13 million as a PA and CI. He is author and co-author of 
uh, 200 publications, including scientific journals and papers. Professor Ali has worked in fact a network in several countries with different organizations, private companies, and so on. So it's a good opportunity for every one of you to interact with him. We have a presentation time of uh, uh, 90 minutes and then 30 minutes uh, discussion. So if you have any doubt, and you can write it on a chat box or in the live stream also you can type it, okay? So at the end of the day, we'll have a quiz. I think a quiz link will be sent tomorrow morning. The people should secure 30% mark as per our norms. Uh, all the participants should score 30%. Whoever scored more than 30, they will be receiving the certificate. So it's to, um, to maintain the quality of our deliberation and even this seminar. So the quiz link will be sent to you tomorrow, 10 a.m. Please note all the participants. Uh, make a note of it from the PPT. There will be 15 questions, okay? So if any clarification, you can mail us or WhatsApp us. Uh, thank you. Uh, Professor, sir, now you can start your lecture. I'll give the time to uh, Professor Askarani. Sir, please. All right. Okay, can you he hear me? Yes, sir. I can I, hear. I think good morning, everyone, and thank you, Dr. Raja, for introducing me. And I would like to express my sincere gratitude to the Central Agriculture University of Archer Basir for inviting me to give a uh, deliver a talk on measuring your impact. Basically, what I'm going to talk today is, is very, very important for research and academic people. If you know in early career what you're supposed to do, what are the ingredients for achieving excellence in the academic area, it will be very, very important for you to learn in the before you start your career or just the beginning of your career. So I'm going to also talk about some of the majors, what people or scientific communities looking around the world in the global competition arena, Okay, what are the things you need to do when you are working as an academic? What are the measures to know your achievements or to recognize your achievements or measure your achievements? Uh, this is a very simple things and most of the people do not know how to do that. And uh, that's why I'm going to give this topic on measuring your impact, the H index citations and impact factor. Actually, I'm a, I graduated from the Shekhar Azad Agriculture University in 2000, BSCAG Agriculture and Hort BSCG Agriculture, and then I continued with the Masters in Horticulture from the same university, and then I got the scholarship from Ministry of Higher Education Malaysia to pursue my PhD in University Putra Malaysia. And when I graduated at that time, the University of Nottingham UK was opening the campus in Malaysia, and I was the first founding member of the School of Bi Staff from the School of Biosciences who joined. Then I become assistant professor in 2006 and become associate professor in 2010. And I become professor in 2014. So it's been a six year I've been professor uh, in the University of Nottingham at Malaysia campus. So uh, uh, today you can see on my slides, uh, actually if you can't hear me, just stop me or you can ask me at the end of the lecture. So you can just interrupt me uh, I hope it is okay uh, if you don't understand anything. This is going to be a little bit of interactive lesson, and I don't know how we are going to interact because uh, 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 we are doing virtually online things, and uh, but we will try to interact if you don't understand. It's something like a workshop. So I'm going to talk about the measuring or impact, the H index, what is the importance of H index, how do you calculate it, citations, impact factors, and what are the other factors which are responsible for measuring your achievements? Uh, and what are the matrices, different kinds of matrices I'm going to talk about, ultrametrics, and what are the other ingredients, the ways to measure your progress or measure your achievements? So before I start, let me uh, give a little background of University of Nottingham. This is, you can see, this is the main building, uh, University of Nottingham in the UK. And, uh, and this University of Nottingham have uh, five campuses around the world, three campuses in the UK and two international campuses 
uh, which is one in China and one in Malaysia. So you can see there, this is the China campus almost, we try to make the main building is almost like identical to each other, so whether it is in China or Malaysia. So this is our China campus. Uh, and this is our Malaysia campus. You can see this is a beautiful campus uh, in Malaysia. And we have three fac two faculty, faculty of science and engineering and faculty of art and social sciences. Uh, we have a number of departments in each faculties. Uh, we have about 40,000 students around the world in all the campuses. You can see this is a main campus in the UK. This is the Malaysia campus. Two things are very common in all the places. One is clock tower and it's a lake. This is a natural lake and we have a man-made lake in Malaysia. So that you can find in all the campuses, these things are very common. Okay, uh, so when I joined this campus, so one of the uh, area which was uh, very important at that time, which was a post-harvest technology. The University of Nottingham is a very famous for doing research in horticulture, in tomatoes, flavor, flavored tomatoes, if you know that. And th there is not much problem of post-harvest wastage, but in, since we are located in Malaysia, there's a lot of problem, nation reasons, like we are wasting one third of the food waste. So I became the, I initiated this thing with, together with the UK campus, and finally I got some grants to open the Center of Excellence for post harvest Biotechnology in 2010. And since then, we have been working on reducing food waste, uh, developing technologies to, to enhance the shelf life of fruits and vegetating, vegetables, uh, developing technology to increase the nutrition of the fresh produce, and also looking into the alternative management of post harvest diseases of, uh, 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 disease of fresh produce. So this is the main mandate. Sorry, what is this? What is this? What is this? Okay, so what basically we do in this center, we combine fundamental science, which is discovery, with the application delivery to address the problem of the relevance of this area, Malaysia, region, and the world. So basically, we do fundamental research and, and bring into the uh, uh, bring into the um, uh, delivery or application side of things. This is very important in this area. If the, if the fundamental research was don't go into the lab or the field, I think the people won't get benefit of it. So this is make sure whatever the fundamental things we do, it, it should be applicable, it should be easy to use and people can get the benefit of that. Okay, so today's talk is basically the objective of the today talk is to aim to introduce the concept of H index to the researchers. What is H index? I think everyone is talking about the H index, whether it's in terms of promotion, whether it comes if you're applying the job or you're getting the grants or you're applying for the funding. I mean, people talk about that they are looking into that index of the principal investigator, poor investigators, or the team members. And so I'm gonna talk about the concepts, how does it measures and what are the impact of this H index, how you can, what you can do to maintain or improve the H index. Second aim is to introduce the different platforms for measuring impact. So H index is measuring the impact of the one uh, particular uh, thing like publication impact using H index. Second thing is what are the other platforms other than H index like citations, ultrametrics, and uh, there are other metrics which is required for to measure the productivity and uh, uh, productivity and the quality of the individual research. So this is. Uh, there are some different platforms I'm going to talk about, and it's going to be something like a hands-on something on the H index area. Okay, sorry, this is. Okay, so why these matrices are important? Why I am going to talk about these matrices? Why these matrices are important for the, uh, is very important for individuals it means how, let's say there are two people, how do you measure that which one is better than which one? So nowadays we need some quantitative data that is very important to judge the quality and the quantity of the individual research. So first is how do you measure how good you are as a scientist? And so there should be quantitative evidences where you can see that this scientist is better than this one. Last time it was like more on perceptions, people perception, we think that you are a good scientist or you are a bad scientist or you are an extraordinary scientist. But how do you measure the, this quality of the research work of the individual scientist? 
So you, it has to be a quantitative data. Second thing, how would you compare the impact of two scientists on a field? Let's say I'm working in the horticulture, there are several people working in the horticulture. How can you measure the impact of the different individuals? So there you need to have a quantitative data on that, our data set, which you can analyze quantitatively, such as publications, H index, and uh, other area. Third means, what if you had to decide which one would get the grant? This is a very important, I'm also the panel member of the Global Challenge Research Fund, which is funded by the United Kingdom Research and Innovation, and these are the large grants. When we sit on the panels or review the grant applications, we need to see if we, at least the quality of the PI or the quality of the team members. So, and let's say the both, uh, two, there are two grants and two, two proposals. If we see that two proposals are equally good, how do you decide? And if you can only fund one application or one proposal, how will you decide that? Then we need to look into that key, which one is the better, which, which is the strongest team member among the two. So that is another you need to have a quantitative uh, measurement. Fourth one, what if we had to decide which one would get the promotion first? That is very important. I think and you all, of, uh, all of you are interested in this, right? So uh, when you go for promotions, uh, I think these are very important criteria, like in the, especially in the British University and the American Ivy League University, they are very, very important criteria. Look into the H index, publications, citations, and these three are the important measures to measure the quality and the quantity of the individual academic experiences or in, in, of the individual. So these are very important, which one has a high H index, which have a which have published a good quality of papers, which is also one of the majors. So there are the matrices you can see that in, within a field, which means, uh, is publishing a better uh, 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 publishing area. I think that there are some people raising hands. Is there any question there? I can see there are some people they are raising hands. Hello? Hello, Dr. Raja. Can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, yes, sir. What's any problem, sir? There, 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 there's a lot of comments coming in. It's not audible. It's not audible. Audio problem, sir. It's not audible. Uh, okay, they have to connect through call through internet. Actually, I will answer them. So yeah, in the yeah, chat okay. box, they have to type right. Yeah, I will. Uh, I will uh, attend their query. They have to connect okay. through. Uh, dear participant, you connect to join through via internet. There will be an option in your uh, mic button. So you have to join through via internet. So it will be audible. Okay. So I think okay. many of you are first time joining through Zoom. Doctor Doctor Raja, are you able to hear me? Uh, Yes. Okay. Stop me, please, if you can't hear me. Yeah, I can hear you very well. Everybody can hear, even other participants. Few people have some problem. I will answer them on the chat box. Okay. All right. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, it's so, a minor. All right. It's okay. Yeah. So, uh, second thing, we're going to talk about measuring the scientific performance is more complicated and important than it seems. Last time, people were just, you know, when you go for promotion, the head of the schools and the management committee will look into that and they can give comments on looking at your behavior or maybe they just rounds to your CV. But now it's becoming more com complicated because you don't have to the bias for any promotion committees. So that's why they had developed various methods which you can look into for promotion, various methods for measurements and the compare have been proposed. So what you should care about this because these matrices are increasingly used by funding bodies to allocate grants. If you apply for some grant, they will look into you the team member H index. And why you also should care about, because employers to give jobs. When you apply for the job, people look at your publications. People will look into your publications impact factors. What quality of publications you are, uh, you are publishing. People will look into your citations how much papers you have been cited, have been cited by other people. People will look into at your uh, uh, something called uh, H index. So these are the important. 
third it is as a criteria for promotion this is a very very important criteria as nowadays happening you know because it is a quantitative measurement so easy to measure anybody can measure it career development is very important and the personal satisfaction means you can measure yourself ki after doing 10 years of services and rich sir where are you where are you standing and you should compare within your own field so our scientific performance score could seriously impact our career so this is what i'm going to talk about so these are the metrics for measuring your scientific performance or scientific achievements and when you go for uh, promotions and other things what are the things what are the metrics metrics which are important like number one is the recommendations from the peer this was the usual practice correct means if you are applying the job you are you are applying for the scholarships so one thing they ask for the can you ask a recommendation letter from your peers or from your boss it's a very good idea it means you have been working with someone and that can recommend to you what kind of person you are and it can write about you but again there is another problem it is subject to the human nature in principle but in subject to the human nature in principle it is a good idea but if i like you i will write a good recommendation or if you are working in the phd student under, under me maybe you are very good but your attitude is not good or maybe there is some person uh, uh, person personal conflicts between you i may not write a good peer review for you so that is the problem for this uh, recommendations of recommendation from the peers second thing you can uh, see look at the number of article published so you know in the cv people are writing like 10 20 the 100 to 100 papers of they have published but what about a long publication list but no impact no citations you are doing research but what some people what they are doing they are trying to do the similar kind of research or they are i think they are doing the same research and same research and publishing here and there and i would say mickey mouse journals like you know so like your dean already mentioned that this is the arena where you publish or peril so and looking into this context people are trying to publish anywhere to satisfy their organizations to satisfy their boss but what about you have 100 papers published but out of 100 papers there are very few or very little citations about those paper that shows that ki whatever the research you are doing is not up to that area not the cutting edge or not the leading area you are doing you may be doing research but it's not of the cutting edge then then what is the problem when you do this one then it seems like that you are maybe i would say you are wasting your money you are doing the research which is not important for the society uh, unnecessarily you are doing the wasting the money for that con- that uh, on that particular research so that is a one thing you can measure yourself second thing uh, a small number of publications are better than the long list if they have more citations now the people are thinking in such a way that ki you have a small number of publication but of good quality or relevant to the current area or relevant to the current situations like okay, if you have a 10 papers but they have a very good quality very good citations that people will think people are reading your paper people are trying to do the research in that particular area or they are trying to develop themselves uh, next point average number of citations per article is better now people are looking at how many papers cited by how many times that is called as a h index this is what i am going to talk about little bit in details so what are the ways other ways to measure the impact i talk about h index now you come out the publications impact of the general general impact factor this is the other me- metrics which you can measure the quality of your publications in in which journal you are publishing what is the quality what is the impact factor of that particular journal is and that is the impact factor of the journal next is general citation report nowadays where the general ranking is I means when you talk about jcr ranking you are working in a food area i am also working in the food area but in the, in the food science and technology where our research lies on or in the area of horticulture where our research is lies on so you can see from the jcr reports and seismogor report it also give the uh, general ranking so you can see the general ranking there so your impact based on the citations to the articles 
and also comprehensive resource with the citation information system. So how do you measure your citations? There are different sites where you can easily see your citation if you have your profile there. If you don't have it, so right now you go and open your profile in these three places, either Google Scholar, Scopus, and Web of Science. Google Scholar slightly, they give more citations, but this thing also included other than the scientific journals. They also include public, uh, like some social media and some non-cited articles it will include. But Scopus give the citations, means OS citations is cited by the articles which is, is, which is uh, published in the scientific journal. A web, a web of science is almost similar to the Scopus. So I'm going to focus, I am going to give you two examples of Google Scholars and Scopus, but not a web of science due to limitation of time. So we can see how we how you measure your citations and latch index using Google Scholars and Scopus. So these above databases also calculate the latch index, you can see that. And there are some other data databases where you can see a lot of other databases like, you know, CSA, uh, MBA, Science Direct, Science Finder, these are the other databases where you can measure your H index and citations. Other than these um, uh, databases of H index, there are other uh, other platform where you can measure your your achievements or impact. It is called as Altometrix Web 2.0. Means this is actually it's not the real citations, but it is a supplement to those citations which is uh, cited by scientific paper in Google Scholar and Scopus, like something like likes and tweets and shares. This is basically when you publish the articles, how many people, uh, uh, your article, how many people have tweeted your articles in the social media. So, and uh, other one is like Plus, Scopus, ResearchGate and other, they are, they are, they are using the different ultrametrics. So this is becoming also very important, ultrametrics now is social age, digital, digital arena, social so, uh, ultrametrics is going to be important for major your such impact. So uh, let's go one by one. Then talking about let's talk general impact factors. Means where you are publishing your paper, you need to know where do you want to publish your paper. Whether it's generally right or wrong. If there are some databases, there are some platforms you can measure your general impact factor. It was created in 1960 by Thomson Reuters. GI general impact factor. Uh, they measure the frequency which an average article has been cited. It means each journal, there's like post harvest biology journals, they can measure the frequency of the article that had been cited by the people who those were publishing in particular journal. And calculated by dividing the number of current year citations into the source items published in that journal during the previous two years, that gives the general impact factor. And that is the reason when you look at the general impact factor, they vary year to year. Like you can see the general impact factor for post viral biology is 4.1 now in 2019 impact factor, whereas in 2018 it was like about 3 or 2.99, something about that. Some university asks you to list impact factor on a CV for each publication. I think you can see that. It is very, very important for young researchers and even for the uh, experienced researcher. You know, nowadays people ask in your CV when you publish a paper, you write the impact factor. Why? because when you apply for the job, now this interview, all the people in the interview panel is not belong to exactly the same area where you are. There are some people which is outside of your area, they will look into the impact factor and they can see what is the quality of the, uh, your researches. The higher the impact factor, the more prestigious the journal. This is how we do, we all know that the higher impact factor, but this is very important when you compare the impact factor, you shouldn't be comparing the impact factor for horticulture with some psychology journal or with chemistry journals, no. You should compare the impact factor within the same area. Like if you're working in the horticulture area, you can compare the science of horticulture, post harvest biology, and other journals within the same area. It is not wise, it is not, a, 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 I would say it's not a, a right way to, um, to look at the impact factor from one area to the another area. Okay, so these are the, some examples I'm going to show you about the SGR five general of ranking. Like I said, it means I'm the interview. Sometimes I sit. I'm from horticulture. Sometimes I sit in interview panel with maybe in psychology. Somebody is appointing psychology. This is a, actually it's a system here. Okay? One person in the interview panel should not be belong to the same area or same school. So they, they can call one person from some other department. So let's say I'm a horticulturist. I'm going to interview. 
uh, uh, people in psychology or people in pharmacy or people in chemical engineering, I wouldn't be knowing about his area quality and all those things. But what I know, I know the quantitative majors. Like I can go to the website and see that what are the major journals in this area is. Like I show you, this is a science a science, a general ranking. You can see agriculture and biological sciences area. You can go to this website. I, I wish I would have a personal interaction with you guys. I'm really sorry because this is the uh, talk I like very much. Uh, like uh, it's, it's very interactive talk. I like face to face where we can do some workshop on that. Hopefully next time I come to India, I will join you guys. So it's very easy to, you can learn something, you know, you can go to the website and you can click the area here and you can see this is agriculture and biological sciences. If it is economy and crop sciences, you can see, uh, economy and crop sciences and this is the area you can here you can put and you can see these are the plant biotechnology journals with the q1 journals and i'm sure you have been knowing that q nowadays is also important q1 journals q2 journals and q3 journals if you go to this website and type agriculture and biological sciences and in this area you can see the q1 journals and you can see q2 journals so what are the q1 journals nowadays some people they don't bother that about the ranking maybe one two three so maybe see they can see that all q1 journals are equivalent like india has a nas rate nas rating you know so you have some marks on that so similar they have a q1 journals plant biotechnology plant genomes molecular plant interaction and you can see that all are three q2 journals so they don't want to be bothering if this is a ranking is higher and this ranking is lower but there you will see that all three are it's, it's like it's a similar quality or similar similar quality of so this is very important q1 q2 q3 generals this is how you see that this is a, one example again i would like to say that uh, last time i've been hearing from many scientists around the world i give a lot of talks in india and people always talk about this is not fair this is not fair people looking at the impact factor people look into the uh, different uh, q1 generals q2 generals but it is not wise that like i said earlier that it shouldn't be comparing between the apple and the oranges. If you want to see the general, if you want to measure quantity, quality of the two people, you measure this should belong to the same area, economy and crop science, then you can see that, okay, he has published plant biotechnology, he has published plant molecular microbes. That makes sense. If that doesn't make sense, I think people are, some scientists are fighting among themselves, it is from chemical engineering, oh, I published in 15 impact factor, and plant science say that I published in two impact factor. It's not fair. Our two impact factor is maybe better than their 15, because they have a best general, which is about 20 impact factor. You always compare in the similar field, in the similar area, whether it's the general ranking, whether it's the QN generals, or very, very H index. Okay. Now there is another example. You can see the broad area, agriculture and biological sciences. My area is horticulture. I put horticulture. And you can see the general ranking of the horticulture. You can see in the post harvest biology is number one general where I my group is publish it, plant pathology second journal, and tree genetics and genomes in third journal, and these are the ranking. But you can see that all four are Q1 journals. So some people say that is you know based on the ranking, which is called as the JCR ranking. Some people they say that okay, they only consider Q1 journal. Like I work in another like some university here, they say that you can only publish in Q1 journal that will be major, other rest of the journals will not be counted for your promotion. So this kind of area we are facing there. So you should check in your own area. This is a very easy way to go on website and you can check it. This is the, what are the journals, what are the Q1, Q2, and Q3 journals. Like I publish it, like some people that also, you know, like the interdisciplinary area. Like what I do, I, my work is very, very interdisciplinary area, starting from, chem, from the horticulture, pathology, chemical engineering, plant sciences, and post harvest technologies. A lot of interactive, we develop technology, which is a very interdisciplinary area. And I publish a lot of paper in this. So I publish in food science area, I publish in horticulture area, I publish in plant science area. That's why you can see another, to see like food science, then you can see annual review of food science, food chemistry, we publish in food chemistry, which is ranking 15, but all you can see this is 17 and 18 ranking, but all you know, one to 18 is Q1 general. So how you take it, how your organization take it, and what you are looking for, what is up to you to decide, you know? So I would say rather than looking the one to second or 18 number, you should focus on Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4 journals in your area. So, and you can see that I showed you three, three examples, plant science, horticulture, and food science. 
Maybe you are talking about the post -haral. I showed you this post -haral biology, which is here in number 16, it was in number one in horticulture area. So as an interview panel, as in a promotion committee, this is very wise for you to think very logically and how you see it. So you can say that post -haral biology and technology general which falls in 16 into the food science area, but is falls number one in horticulture area. So this is very important for the people, very important for the promotion committee, very proper, important for the senior people who look into the people's candidature. Okay, so these are the, I was talking about the general impact factors, quality of the journals, not the individual one. Those I have been talking about, it shows not your quality, it shows the quality of the public, uh, journals where you published. It's not going to see your direct impact on you, but it can say where you publish, what kind of papers you have published, what quality of journals you publish in that. When it comes to the individual, when it comes to the individual performance, individual achievement, this comes as a H index. Actually, and this H index is, I think it was prescribed by John uh, Hirsch in 2005. He was a scientist, he was working in the University of California, San Diego, and he published a paper in PNAS, Proceedings of National Academy of Sciences in US in 2005, and says that this is the right way to measure the impact of the scientists rather than looking into the number of publications. There are a lot of, uh, uh, I would say there are, for, Many people who like it, many people who did not like it, a lot of controversy about, around it, but until now, is this still the best practice to measure the individual's research, individual's research impact, quality and quantity both by measuring the H index of the, uh, uh, of the person. So what is H index says is basically, this H index is an index that attempts to measure both the productivity and the citation impact of the published body of the work of a scientist, the index is based on the set of scientists' most cited papers and the number of citations that they have received in other publications. So what is this? It, it measures the both scientific productivity and the scientific impact both. Scientific productivity means, like any of you, how many papers you have published. That is called as your scientific productivity. You have published 10 papers. That is your productivity. But whether this, those 10 papers have high quality, that is called as a scientific impact. All the papers you are public, publishing, whether it has a good impact, whether it's a good impact on society, whether it's up to date, whether this is the cutting edge, you are doing the cutting edge research, it is showing to so the productivity and the impact of your publication or impact of your research. So, so since this introduction in decade ago in 2005, and it's become the very popular tool. So every top, top, very popular measures to measure your productive, measure the individual's productivity of the researcher. So, if I say, what is, how do you measure the H index? You know. Okay. So, like I said, like this is the guy who discovered. It is a French guy, George, George Eduardo Hirsch from the University of California and San Diego is known for inventing the H index he published in PNAS. It is also called as a Hitch index or his number. And, uh, and it has been quickly adopted as a metric of choice for many committees and bodies. It is a very popular norm and it's getting more and more popular for the promotion or for the committees and different bodies who give the grant, who approve the grant proposals, who the different bodies who appoint the, uh, who give promotions, there are different bodies who give the jobs, in the job interview, people look into it, H index. This, this is going to be a very, very important measurement for the academic scientists. So that's why I thought it's very important to give a talk on that when somebody approached me. So what is uh, H index is? And a scientist has an index of H. If H of is her number of papers, have at least H citation each. So that's why I said earlier, like I would give a very face-to-face -face talk so whether we can do some practice questions on that. So it means that if you say that okay, my H index is five, it means that five of my papers at least cited five times. So my H index becomes five. I will show you one or two examples so you will understand easily. So other than H index, there are different variants of H index. Like nowadays, 
uh, you can see G index, I10 index, and there, there are many more. These are not very important actually. So what is now I10, you can see very easily on Google Scholar. You can see how many papers you've cited 10 times. That is called as an I10 index. So if it is not sure what is, uh, how do you calculate the H index, I will show you some example here. Let's say I have 12 papers, my H index is 5. What does it mean? I have published 12 papers, but my H index is 5. So it means that 5 of my papers have at least 5 citations each. Understand? Any question from that? Let's say I have 12 papers. My H index is 5 means 5 papers cited by 5 times. You know, that becomes my H index is 5 times. Can you hear me, guys? Yes, sir. We can hear. Okay, I, I think oh, yeah, I think you, you you muted other people. That's why I can't see any response. Anyway, it's all right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, actually there was some exercise, so I wanted to know the, whether people are understanding or not. I'm giving another example, like calculating H index. You can see that. You can see my left hand side. This is a number of articles. You can see that. Like I've given an example, I have published twelve papers, and my H index is five. So. And you can see my this is my 12 articles and this is the number of citations of my articles for example my one article is cited 87 times second article is cited 70 times third mm -hmm. article is uh, cited 46 times six article is cited 15 times so can i ask you looking at this table how will you say how much i have my h index here anyone there you can type it Looking at these, my publication they call, this is my article, and this is the citations of my articles. So how much H index I have? You may type it. I'm looking. If you look at this table, how much citations I, how much H index I have? You, you may choose to type it. Is the article number one, 12 articles I published, and is, is the record, is the citations of my 12 articles. You can see it, it, it's based on the highest citations to the lowest citations. So two participants raise the hand. Uh, do you want to interact with them? Sir, you have uh, muted yourself. Uh, can you unmute? Yes, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, so if people want to interact with me, yeah, can you tell me how much H index I have? Looking at this table, you may talk to me or you may you can write to on the chat box. So I can understand whether you understand my topic today or not. It's not to judge you, just it's an interactive session. Anyone here? No. Okay. So you some can... of them raised a hand. Sir, excuse me, sir. Some okay. of them raised a hand. Can we ask them to ask the question, interact with you? or you can yeah. No, it's okay. It's okay. If I'm fine with the interaction if they want to ask me. Yeah. Okay. So can I unmute them? The two people who have raised. Correct. Yeah. Anyone would like to ask me anything?
Yeah, hello, Dr. Asghar Ali. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Who is this? Yeah, according to this table, your H index is 8. Your 8 paper estimates have more than 8 citations. Correct. Okay. All right. So mm -hmm. let's go ne next. I think, yeah, I, I, we can have a question answer later on. Is that okay? All right. So you can see there, if you mean the right hand side, uh, a scientist has an index H if H of his number of papers appears at least H citations each, and the other papers have at most H citations each. It means that uh, any scientist which has any number of paper, H means like say for example, 10, if 10 of his paper, number of papers have been at least cited by 10 citations each, then it becomes 10, 10 H index. And rest of the papers, uh, have to be most at least less than 10 or at least 10. That is called as a 10 citations. I think most of you understand this one. You can see here, yes, most of the people who say like seven, 10, eight, nine. So eight was the right answer. Like eight articles have been cited at least eight or more times and the remaining articles have been cited eight or less. You can see seven papers cited 10 times, eight papers cited nine times, but here are my nine articles cited only eight times. So cannot be a nine H index. In this case, my H index is eight. Correct? Okay. So now I think, I hope you all understand what, how do you calculate that index and what is the fundamental of H index is. And in terms of measuring, it's very easy. You have different platforms, Google Scholar, Scopus and Web of Science, which will be able to measure your H index out, out, automatically. Now, it comes to our mind, what is the impact of H index? How can you interpret quality in terms of quantitative data of H index? That is very important you need to understand why H index is important. What shows the H index is that? You can see left hand side, the H index of the Nobel laureate. The number of Nobel Prize repetition in the physics in the last 20 years. The peak is that the H index between 35 to 39. This is just, you can't see that this is a very direct relationship, but there are some relationships. So out of the novel laureate, you can see that the normal their H index is 35 to 39. This is from the PNAS, you know, Proceeding of National Academy of Sciences. So in between 35 to 39. These are the, for the last 20 years report data of the novel laureate. So you can imagine here, wow, the quality of their research it will be reflected by the H index of their individual. So this is just some relationship between the quality. You can see on this slides, I'm talking about Albert Einstein. He has a citations of, you know, about 132,724. His H index is 111, Google of the scholar, and he has a like 386. H index. So what is the impact of his research looking at the his impact H index? You can see that and the citations. Okay, like I said, why is that important to me? I've been talking, you have been listening, and why do you bother about the H index? One thing that it shows your quality. Second thing, everybody wants to promote. Everybody wants to go in the higher level. Everybody wants to go in the upper level. So these are one of the criteria which we think that this is very, very important because we need a progression in our academic career. So you can see this is the measurement of scientific output of the research. In PhD, a very few publications. When you go to upward associate professor, you go some more publications and you have become professor, definitely they need to see that some more publication or good quality of publications or many publications is that. So over the year in the academic area, make sure you are progressing. You cannot be stagnant in the academic area. You need to show, show the progress from one stage to the second stage to the third stage and so on, and you keep going on. But there will be many, many more publications when you go for the professors. And this is the same way, where if you move from this level to this level to this level, definitely over the year, your the publication report should be increasing. What is important here? Why the H index? This is what he mentioned in 2005. There are list of plenty. There are many people, several people who have by 500 papers, 600 papers, but their citation is about only 50 or 60 or 100. 
means that whatever the research you are doing is not that important to the society. So why do you want to continue the, to continue the research which is not important to the society? I think this makes sense and you all of you agree with me if that makes sense because even doing the research is not uh, doing the research is a costly affair and you are you are reinventing the wheel which you know, don't need to do that. You are reinventing the wheel on the cost of the government and other funding agency and you are wasting the money for the this particular research. So that's why H index comes. So H index tells you he, he, how much citations you are getting and then the latest publications, what is the impact in the society. So now this is another question comes to the mind. Like many people asking me, I'm also a staff development officer and I also advise people to prepare their CV for promotion. And also they, I help them to prepare their CV. They come and asking me, he, oh, I'm going for a professor, I am going for a professor. What is the actual H index do you need? What are the quantitative majors you want in my CV? So that is a very, very important question. So there is some simple example I have collected from these some databases. What is a good H index for the professors in biology compared to the professors in psychology? That could be different. Like I said, you need to compare within your own area. It is not fair to compare it from the other area. Like I've given one example, UK Russell Group University of 88 academics identifying themselves as a full professor in Google Scholar. The main, the mean edge index was 24 and median was 20. I'm talking about the Google Scholar. In biology area means that in order to become a professor, you should have a medium at least 20 or 24 edge index, which is nice. But the top 25 professor had an edge index of 30 or greater. I mean, if promotion is okay, 20 to 24, at least you have a index, you are eligible for this promotion. But if you're really good professor, then you do have a, a 30 or excellent or greater edge index in the Google Scholar. So this always varies. There is a discipline variation, like I said. There is a lot of variation. I'm talking about is biology here, but if you look at the computer science, computer science, they say edge index means 23, median is 21. Psychology, the, the H index median mean is 26, median 19. So biomedicine H index is 28, median is 25, is slightly higher in biomedicine. And aspiring professor should aim to have their work cited 1,000 times and our H index average for their discipline. Means that a really good professor, aspiring professor, at least they should have 1,000 times of citation. Citation, not talking about the H index, at least they should have with 1,000 times of uh, 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 citations. And this is the H index average for that discipline. Like biology, I said, median is 20 and the mean is 24. So if you are for biology, like our, we comes into the biology, our plant sciences and agricultural sciences. So what you, if we are going for professorship, we should have at least 24 H index and citations should be around 1,000 times. So this is something like a very rough idea, you know, very rough idea for the promotion here. This is, um, like I showed you, I will give you two examples for uh, measuring citations and match index, Google Scholars and Scopus. So this is uh, my flagship, I'm giving my examples, like is a Google Scholar, like my citation is 3000 and the H index is 29 and item is 25. So what you need to do is just open the Google Scholar, put your profiles and they automatically capture. Sometimes you have to be very careful that sometimes they capture their somebody else's data and you need to see, you need to see the, uh, I think you have to watch those sites because sometimes it's mismatch others name like if like Asghar Ali, there is Asghar Ali working somewhere else, they bring their publication here. You have to make sure to remove that name because it is not ethically correct. So make sure whatever your Google Scholar is, it is clean, it's your paper because people are watching you, you know? So these are the, like, this is the one example I want to show that. So these are citations and these are the, top, and you can see top cited papers. These are top cited papers of our group food chemistry, post harvest biology, post harvest biology, and food chemistry. It's quite interdisciplinary area in my area. Okay, what else you can see? Here you can see the previous slides. I show you the individual citations and impact factors. Okay, let's say if applying a grant or if applying for promotion, or if you're applying for a job somewhere, so this is an open interface or open platform where other people can see your citations and Google Scholar. 
So they will type my name into Google Scholar and see what is my impact is. They can look at my paper, they will see my citation, and they will see my touch index. Second thing, if some funding agency, let's say if I'm a panel member of the funding of grant awarding body, what I will look into that, I don't know about University of Nottingham, or I don't know about Central Agriculture University. So what I will do, I will type the organization name here, and you will see who are the top people here publishing in that organization. So look at my profile, like I comes into that first page. But it will blow highly cited people in the top one fifth pages, then second page, then third page, then fourth page. So they will also look at how I'm comparable to the other people in that organization. That gives you some indication. But this is also not fair, not correct, because you know these people are from engineering, these are all from engineering. I was only from the science. So this is not the right way, but it will give you some idea to the funders where I stand for, where my research stand for. So that is a Google Scholar. Uh, some people, they go for Scopus. Scopus is more reliable because he's totally captured into the peer review publications. It's not, you can't see your citation in some other media outlet or somewhere. So Scopus is another platform where you can see your citation. So what you can do, you go to the scopus.com and where can I locate my H index? You go to the scopus.com. What you can do is that log in. I'm giving just one example. How can you log in? If you are like institutions, I have Sure, CA, you have some uh, prescriptions. They can go online. They can freely browse. You guys can freely browse in CAU. And what you can do, you can cite your organizations, like mine is University of Nottingham. And this one, I can log in using the institutional email and the idea. OK, so go to the Scopus. If you want to know about any individuals, I give you go to the author search here, search. You could click the search button how to start my search, go to the search button. And what you can do, you can search by documents, you can search by affiliations, or the best way to search by author. Like I'm giving one example, go to discopus.com. Uh, what you can, you can search author name, last name Ali, first name Asgar, and you can click the search button and you can see my profile there. But when you look into the profile, there will be so many Asgar Ali. So how do you identify which one Asgar Ali you are looking for? Like this is the one. When I search it as currently, there are various authors came in. I think almost how many? Oh, many. I think 12 or 11 authors. You can see it's 11 authors results here. So what you need to see? You need to see according to that one, where is my affiliation is. You can see this is the second number, University of Nottingham. Then you click on as currently, then you are, okay, you are searching the right person. Yeah? As currently, University of Nottingham, and this is the person you are looking for. Okay, so what you can do here, this is a very useful tool. The Scopus is very, very useful. To give. It gives you all the analysis. It gives you everything, whatever you want. Okay, so what do you do? You can see as early now, there's a, Orchid is very important platform. So you can attach your Orchid with the Scopus detail and you can see how much is the H index in the Scopus. My H index is like 24. You can see that and to about 2000 citations and 78 documents, which is Scopus cited. Other than that, you have a lot of doubt. So what you can see, and what you can do, you can now analyze. Now you've got like rough idea, citations, and the agenda, but you want to see more. You want to browse more about something impact of the research. So what you can do, you can see as clearly where he publishes. So this is the pie chart. Uh, he can show you the which journal I publish the most. You can see, and here is source. Like post harvest biology, I publish 12 journal. Science of horticulture, I publish 10 journal. For protection, I publish a seven journal. This is gives you further analysis of your output. Like which journals, which journals your favorite journal, or which journal you, you publish most of the papers. So, like you can see that post harvest biology, this is the pie chart saying that okay, which of the journals you are choosing that. So, that will also show you the quality of your publications. Quality, here you can see quality of the individuals citations and impact factors. And maybe like here you can see that like post harvest biology published, there is 12 papers. Maybe, uh, maybe I publish up in the journals, which is like Q4. And, uh, but my citation is high. It may be possible, but in there you can see maybe my citation is high, but by the quality of journal is low. So you can analyze everything. So here you can see the quality of journal is also here. And citation is also here. Okay, now, you can see well, H index 
where it's going and now you can see each paper cited how many times like this is the paper this is i think it's in food chemistry this is in post viral biology post viral biology post -viral biology this is in the crop production you can see which paper and which article cited how many times this is cited 194 times in this journals and you can see your h how your h index increasing one thing i'm telling you very important the h index like from two to four four to eight or eight to 16 is still okay once you reach more than 20 it's very very difficult to reach uh, one uh, better h index that's why it's a very good major i like it you have to really do a very good quality very high quality research in order to get the better h index so that's why, uh, to me, I, I find this is a very important tool measuring H index factor rather than just total citations. Some of the profile you can see that I didn't put the examples here. Some of the profile you can see that okay, they have like five thousand citations. Okay, and if you look at the Google Scholar, the Scopus site, uh, and look at the, all the papers, so you can see one paper got two thousand citations. Or maybe some papers got 3,000 citations. Rest of the paper, like other 98 papers, 99 papers, is having one, two, three, four, five. So that is the, the where you can see the difference. Maybe by chance you publish one paper in Nature. I have I have seen many many profile like that. Some people they have a publication in Nature, and that Nature paper is citations about 4,000. For an example. And rest of the paper is like very few citations. So you can have, although you have a 5,000 citations, but your index may be five or six or 10. Many, many profiles have come across that. This shows that, okay, one time you work hard, you did a very good research, and then you become older, you are becoming lazy. You are not going to put your efforts for the research. So that's why it is a very good measure to see the H index factors. Okay. So this is what you see, and you can see how the documentation increased and how your H index increases. Okay, from the Scopus, like Google, you also can see affiliation, the University of Nottingham affiliation. They want this is very important when you apply a grant for the large grant like World Bank grant or something like a GCRF grants or Newton grants or European EU grant. So they look into the organization's affiliation, of how the organization is performing. So this is the from there you can look into that this organizations like 4000 1300 author and these are the which area they have published engineering chemical science environmental science agricultural science these papers so they can look into the organization quality funding body and they can decide whether it is good to pay such a huge amount of funding to them or not whether they can handle it or not so this is shows the organization quality all right I know there are some people, they always say that okay, this is not a good uh, way of measuring the impact H index. I truly agree with them because there are some limitations in H index. And one of those limitations are it insensitive to the highly cited paper. Just now I mentioned what I have given you an example. Okay, he like you for like 20, 100 papers published out of 100 papers, one paper you have published in Nature that has like 5, 4,500 citations, and rest of the paper have only 500 citations. That is, it's become insensitive when you measure the H index. So that is the one drawback. It makes sure whatever the research or publication are doing, keep publishing a good quality, a good quality, and, and relevant to the society, relevant to the current scenario, like COVID-19. You do the research which is related to COVID-19, you will definitely have a high H index. Many people may have the safe index and thus cannot differentiate their scientific achievement. Correct. Like two people going for promotions, I have H index 30, and other people also have same index 30. So these are the one point. But again, you have to look into the CV. There are other factors which could make them differentiate. Okay. Is this fair to rank a scientist of varying level of seniority? Ah, that is the limitations. This is a major limitation. The H index depends on the number of, first thing, you have to publish a paper because you only publish five papers. No way you can, even if you, those five papers, you have cited 500 times or 5,000 times, your impact factor, your H index won't be more than five. And also, in order to publish a more paper, you need to work for a longer time. Like I have been, I, 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 I have a, uh, my PhD is in 2007. I joined the university in 2007. It's like almost like a 14 years I've been working and I'm comparing myself 
to somebody who's working about 30, about to retire at 60 years age, then it's, it's a limitation. Okay, so you cannot rank scientists varying level of seniority. Meet he has been working for 50 years, I've been up to 50 years, but even though at the index can differentiate, I'm just younger than you, but my index is higher than those who are working in, for the last 20, 25 years, it shows that your quality is not that great as compared to my quality. So that is something. But again, the more you work, you have more better chance to increase your rank index, the, you have better chance to improve your citations. So that was a limitation. It does not mm. make, take account into the number of authors on the papers. A scientist who is the sole author of the paper with 100 citations should be given more credit than the one who is on a similarly cited paper with 10 co-authors. Correct. That is also thing. If you are publishing a paper, there's a 15th of authors. So all 15 authors will get in the credit for that. And you're comparing to somebody who has only published a paper, only one or two authors. That becomes insensitive. Though 100, but both will get the equal opportunity of the H index. Last one, it penalizes the early career scientists. Outstanding scientists, which only a small number of publications can have a high edge index. And that is a one limitation. So that's why I keep telling you, the quality of the research is very, very important. You think before you do the research, you think what kind of research you want to do that, what kind of, uh, uh, you, when you write a proposal, make sure writing uh, of cutting edge proposal, which is relevant to the current society, is relevant to the, uh, Current scenario, so that it has, then it will have an impact on that. So it, that's why it penalizes early career scientists. Out and like if somebody who just joined it, he has less experience, or maybe he is not. Uh, 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 of course, the, uh, people learn from the experience. He is not very experienced, so you can see that he, he have a very less opportunity to grow in earlier stages. And there is already outstanding scientists. He have a very small number of papers, but he can. Uh, do a, a very good high citation. So that is good for that scientist, but not good for the early career research. Okay. So in the conclusion, or you can see that I, I was just reading some questions, the H index integrate both productivity and impact in a single factor. So that is what it gives, like an H index integrate both your productivity and the impact. Productivity means how many papers you have published and the impact of the individual papers. So it goes with the belief that you cannot increase your H index unless you have published more paper. And second thing uh, also, means even if you publish 100 papers, you cannot improve your H index unless you do a high quality research or you publish a good quality publications or even the good quality journals, but you do, your work is not very relevant to the current society, then it also is not going to increase your H index. For an example, uh, I can give example like those who are living in the tropical area, uh, maybe that is not relevant to the particular reason, and you're publishing in a, in a, in a uh, local journals and it's not going to have a good impact. Sometimes what happens if you publish in a local journal and which is very relevant to, for that particular area, like, uh, you know, and then it have a good citations. Like there was one guy who published in Malaysian journal in crop science and it, he does a very good work on rice, but he's looking at some local edific factors and his citation increased because he was solving the very, very, very uh, localized problems. And everybody was your rice and you're talking about soil reclamations and all those things. So that can, he can increase the impact of this paper. Although the, 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 the paper where he published the general was not very high quality, or if not very Q1 general, but his impact increases so it, it, because of the relevant to the particular area. So relevancy is important, cutting edge is important. Easy to use and understand. The second thing, like uh, I'm, I'm sitting at the panel and interview, I'm going to analyze two candidates. I have to, at least some quantitative measurements, you can see that. He's at this five, and I'm, I'm looking for the point in post harvest biology lecturer, and his impact is, factor is 10. So at least you can differentiate if H index is higher than this one. At least it gives you some indications. And also a useful tool, especially for the early career research. It's a very useful tool. And I have one example who uses very much high in the in very early career research. I promoted very fast within seven years of my services. I become professor. 
So that was one of the reasons, I mean, it, 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 it's not the only reasons, but at least it can be one of the reasons. From the early career, I took the lead on that index, early career, I took the lead on the quality publication. So it is very useful tool for the early career researcher. So that's what I'm saying, though most of you are here, maybe early career, so take note of that, you understand very well what is H index is, what does it mean, how H index you can translate into your quality, how these fact major different quantitative measures important in your life, in your career. It's better to measure now rather than later. And you, if you know now, you can do a lot of things now. Okay, so these are the quantitative measures. Now, the, now some of the things are coming very popular now, which is called as the ultimatrics. Ultimate. It is not to something I would say that uh, it is a uh, ultimatrix is something are not mean to replace the citations counts or the H index, but instead complements the metrics with the additional data. Okay, it complements. It cannot can be alternative means that your h index in scopus h index in google scholar is very very important but what is alternative it is something like a supplements to the uh, your current well, let's say you are public nowadays you can see research gate you're publishing some paper all of a sudden you get boom up or you're publishing article sometimes you do the blog blog nowadays is very popular you publish one paper in post biology okay i'm developing edible coatings they're very novel edible coatings and then it's got the attention from the newspaper they will come to you and they will take your interview say he is developing some natural edible coatings and he does the impact on that so what happened it can so this is called as an ultimatrix it supplements what you have already published in the some journal so this is a, something it, it actually started in 2010 last time because of the digital area and I see getting more and I hope it's going to be more and more popular. You know, it's going to be very strong majors to major the personal achievements or popularity or as a generalization of all technical level measurements. I will show you some examples of that. And how these alter altermetrics they work? Altermetrics, altermetrics can answer questions such as how many times was it downloaded? If you know that some of you have uh, research gate profile yes research gate profile and you can clearly say that how many people have downloaded that paper or how many people have read which is based on the uh, downloads we consider is a read okay so i'm going to say that uh, so this is very important you can say oh this article and, and you can clearly say in the research gate key maybe some people have 500 publications but total read is about 500 some people may have 50 publications, but their reads is about 10,000. Uh, really? It's not the citation, but at least you can see the only 50 publication articles, but it's read by the 5,000 people. It means that it is doing something important, that the article is very, very important for the society, very important for the academic people. That's why they are reading this one. That, that is called as a, how many times it's downloaded. Other thing nowadays, you can see who is reading my work. On Mendeley, you can see that bookmarking site you can see that how many people are reading your work it can you can see on the social media was it covered by any news agency like i given you one example you develop some paper like i did one uh, we are the pioneer of gum arabic coating so gum arabic coating uh, developed by the center of excellence post biotechnology in our campus and our group of people developed so once we published immediately a lot of newspaper came in from the us from the other places national geography I will show you some examples, and they said, "Oh, we developed Gamma Arabic. Is, is it? Was it covered by the, any news agency? So they got attention, and you can see that news agency. They come and interview. They write your article in their newspaper, and this is another ultrametric case. Are other researchers commenting on it? Yes, there are some other major like there is the one called Conversation. I would say you guys publish Conversation is a platform is where you can write your scientific article in a such a way like." Uh, small children can read and understand like it's school going children read and understand that is a different art i know there are many scientists they can write a very good scientific paper but they can't write you can't describe your research so it can be easily understood by the small children and that nowadays i think this is very very important especially in india it has to be like this you can develop the interest in the young minds i think this is the where we are lacking it the students there in india they are they are not very scientific temperament. So they like to read stories and all those things. But if you make these scientific achievement into a story or scientific findings into a story, so they will reading as a, um, as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a as a as a book and they develop their interest in that. 
this is I'm sharing my experience. Like when I go to UK and I see how they uh, how they uh, interact with the young young children, O level or you know year 10, 11, they come and visit the schools, visit the university, visit the lab, and how they develop this scientific temperament in their mind. So they got interested into the science. And this is the one of the reasons these are the metrics are very, very popular. The conversation is very important platform where you can write your about your research in a very simple form. Like how many times was it shared on Facebook, Twitter, and etc., LinkedIn? And this is another metric. Which country are looking at it, my research? You can see that, like if you LinkedIn, you can uh, uh, submit some articles, you can how many viewers and which country have the maximum viewers. And you can see that it means who are the people interested into your altermetrics. Like I give you one example, you know, like uh, this is a very old one, I think 2017, I didn't change it. And this is research get like with 229 reads, you were the most read author from your institutions. This is simple altermetrics. If you want to see that, if from your institution this week, you were the highly read articles from your area, from your site. So with 229 reads, you were the most read authors from your institution. That gives you some indication in other people's mind, okay, yeah, I think this guy is doing well, and this guy is doing good research, which have interest by the several other people around the world. And if, if you go to further analysis in this, you can also find out which people doing or uh, uh, where they are, from which country people look into your research. Another example, like congratulations with 16 new citations, you are the most cited researcher from your department in one week time. So this is another one, this is also altermetric. You can see some data on that, how your paper, this paper has cited by these people 16 times in this week. Yes, this is the example I wanted to show you. This is a good example. This is the conversations. What is it? The natural way to keep the food fresh and stop the rot. Basically, this is coming from the our article from, oh, sorry, the what what we have published in Food Chemistry and post Harvest Biology. This is the gum Arabic coating. How this gum Arabic coating this is written by me. You can see as early. And this is, they, I just summarized into a very, 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 uh, like, very low level or, or something like a story, so people have that one, and this become one of the most popular read in this conversation. So this is another example of altermetrics. Similarly, when we develop this Agama Rappi, you can see it comes to the National Geography magazine. So this is from my lab, this is my PhD students working in my center, and they got that this is in Hungary. So Hungary people, they have got interest into that. This published article is National Geography. This is another example of the altermetrics. This other example is comes in main media paper, a star newspaper, Malaysia. It comes in improving on the food quality by using edible coating. You can see the University of Nottingham, Malaysia Campus developing new technology a, to aim to ensure the food we grow is nutritious and the safe for consumption. Very simple read. I'm not talking about the scientific thing. I'm talking about the technology. If you use it, you can enhance the shelf type of papaya, banana, and tropical fruit. And it goes to the main newspaper. Can you see how many people read in that? If I write that effect of this and this and this, a newspaper, nobody will have interest. That means you know the readers. That interest for scientific people. Newspaper, no scientific. I think if, if you go to the wider audience, it goes to the people to give the news and find it out. So this is a, another article. Major of ultrametrics. This is another ultrametrics when you do a lot of uh, uh, your, your, I give just one example, like I do a lot of invited speakers, talk, workshops, panels, I've been panels in different, like I'm the panel members of UK Research Innovation, which fund large funds from global GCRF, global, uh, global challenge research fund, about 20 million pounds and 30, 40 million pounds. So I sit on those panels and award those grants. So this is something like appreciation. And then you see that UKRI, they wrote to my vice chancellor, Professor Graham Kando, appreciation of contribution to the UKRI International Double Peer Review, followed by Professor Asgarvi. So he's contributing, not talking to me, but he's writing to the vice chancellor, saying that this is how much time I spend because my time is my organization time. So that is another ultrametric. So my organization, I'm writing to, on behalf of the UK RI International Development to make you aware of the contribution to the police and UK RI by Professor Asghar Ali and to express our gratitude. Nothing means that he's just taking a note, likely to Vice Chancellor, like how much time I will spend on that. So that is something like a other alternative to show your quality of the research. This is another example, like I've been appointed by the Italy, UK, and Italy for permitted law, Mr. Faisal Asghar Ali is registered scientific expert 
for the following section applied research scientific popularizations economics and financial evaluations so this is some of the other alternative which is useful for the academic career i think i have taken some more time so some of the references from here and uh, so what you need to do some of you if you don't have any accounts or anything at least i will recommend you to just open the google scholar and the scopus at least you google scholar and you can see how you grow in the next stage so this is very important thing you need to open the google scholar now to measure your academic impact and keep an eye on those record and keep working hard keep publishing good papers do some good research not publishing good paper i would say i would say you need to do a good research you need to lot of papers you need to read a lot of background study and analyze it and find out that what is best for the to next way next for what is the way forward to go into that particular area the quality of your research is very very important so with this i will end my talk and i am very very happy to take any questions from you guys <coughs> dr raja thank you very much sir for your very informative and knowledgeable yes sir can you hear me yes can i can you hear, hear you me? yes i can hear you yeah uh, thank you yeah thank you very much sir for your very informative and knowledgeable presentation on how to populate it and uh, elaborating more on scopus and high index and then uh, how to populate it uh, thank yeah. you very much now i'll give time to the participant to interact with you uh, sure yeah yeah i would uh, i'll some of them are raise their hand uh, those who have a question you just uh, uh, drop it in the write it in the chat box and few of them written in the chat box okay let me see i thought there was a question uh, can you re uh, can i read it for you yes please ha huh. there was a uh, question is say uh, if anyone published one paper ha huh? just a minute sir yes Uh, if anyone published one paper cited a hundred times, then huh? high index is a hundred. What number no. of papers H index no. starts? No, there is no number. Like simple rule of thumb is like how many papers you have published. Say if you have published five five papers, correct, and only two papers have been cited. So in order to have a two H index, two of your paper cited two times. Uh, if you publish five papers your h index no way cannot be more than 5 5 actually if anyone publish one paper cited hundred times and h no cannot is wrong somebody written if anyone publish one paper cited hundred times then h index is 100 no from what number paper such in the start no basically uh, how many papers cited how many times if let's say if you have five papers cited five times then h index become 5 forget about how many papers you have published then the next question is hmm oh uh, h index will be one. oh sorry that is the answer hmm. yeah there was question sir uh, it is often seen that open journal hmm open journal research journal attribute more rating yes it depends what do you mean by open journal open access journal there are mickey mouse journal who charge money for you and then they freely available yeah that is it means open journal means it's widely widely uh, readable by many people so that is fine there are some good journals also where you pay you can pay the open access fees so you can freely available like myself like i can see things in university of nottingham is institutional they uh, they can have access to Okay. So, uh, somebody raised question, and uh, I have given the privilege to unmute yourself and ask the question. And uh, one has raised the question, Doctor Vinita Rathor. Can you unmute and ask the question? 
Dr. Vinita Rathor. Yes, sir. Um, sir, good morning, sir. Uh, yeah, hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, good morning, sir. Sir, uh, you presented um, very nice information. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, sir, okay, I am posted you. at GB Pant University, Pandagar. Pandagar. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes, yes sir. Sir, uh, sir, my question also that the uh, genders which have the less rating, मतलब which observed in my um, Google Scholar, mm -hmm. sir, gender having the less rating in comparison to Indian scientists or agriculture sciences, the gender having the micro Indian International Journal of Microbiology or Pharmacology, Pharmacology type, the gender give the more rating, sir. Why? Okay, I think you you uh, I would say that you don't look for the NAS rating. You you look for the JCR rating, the one I showed you earlier. If you have attended my talk, general yes, citation J, JCI index. So if you are working in the horticulture area, so I think you should follow the general citation index. What are the top journals in in horticulture area? Like science or horticulture, then depends on the which uh, which area in horticulture are working on that. So and when it is a good paper in JCI index, automatically it will be good rating in NAS. So NAS rating is not that very good. As compared to JCI rating, so rather than looking at the NAS, you look for the JCI rating. It will automatically be good for the NAS rating. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Welcome. Sir, uh, before going further, uh, can you uh, close this screen sharing? I want to see the participant who are asking the question, sir. Okay. Yeah. Better to close the uh, share, right? Yes. Screen share. Just, Hold, hold, yes, uh, just, just. Yes. Yes. So there is a participant. Yeah. Now it's yeah, yeah. yeah, it's better. Okay. Yeah. At least I can see the yeah. participant. Hello. Hello. Yes. Yes. Please. Yeah. Kausi. Sir, what is the difference? Hello, sir. What is the difference between NAS rating journal and JCS uh, rating journal? JCS journal. Oh, this is basically the NAS rating is National Academy of Agriculture Scientists in India. So they, they created their rating oh. in, in, based on there's a group of scientists who work on the ASRB Agriculture the Science Recruitment Board. So they created this NAS rating uh, based on quality of the JCI. I'm sure they would have seen that ranking of the JCI journals. So like I said earlier. You shouldn't be focusing more on NAS rating. This is, I know I was giving talk, I think, one month before. People were very, the guys from India, they were talking about the NAS rating. So if you consider the, um, the JCI rating, it automatically will be the NAS rating because NAS rating is also coming from the this JCI rating. rating. Sir, sir, one more question. As a, uh, the student of uh, MSc Plant Physiology, I completed my MSc Plant Physiology from Vidhan Now I'm a research scholar of same university. And I want to publish my MSc research paper. So, what uh, point should I maintain when I publish the paper uh, in different journal or? No, no, no. I didn't hear you very well. You, you want to publish Sir, your plant physiology? Uh, you want to publish? Yeah. Yeah. Um, actually, I completed my MSc in plant physiology from Vidhan Chandu Kishun Shubhidala, West Bengal. Ah, okay. So mm -hmm. now I'm a student of research research scholar in the same department. Now okay. I want to publish my MSc research research paper. In okay. reputed journals. Okay. So, what kind, of, what kind of points, yeah, what points I should maintain is my research paper in a uh, uh, good research journal. Mm, it's not, it's not a good point. It means what kind of work you have done accordingly. Mm -hmm. You need to see the research journal. You know because you already done it, correct? Y yes, sir. Yeah. So now, what you have to look at? What are the work you? Have, I'm not sure. What plant physiology is a big area. What kind of research you have done? And accordingly, in plant physiology. There are lots of plant physiology journals. You need to what is specific parameters you have taken into your research, and then you mm -hmm. to look for accordingly because these journals are not is very specific. You know. So you mm -hmm. need to look into the what aspect you have done and which journal is more suitable. So if you go to the general website, you can read mm -hmm. aims and scope of the journal, and from there you can decide if which mm -hmm. journal is suitable for your research. Mm -hmm. You can target those journals. Now you have no oh. choice to what you have to need to do according to the journal. What you have done, you need to find out the journals according to your needs. Which okay. is more suitable journal? Yeah. Okay, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. One more question. That, sir, what are the things we have to consider while choosing a journal? If there is a comparison between NAS and impact factor, which one 
we should take. Okay, what are the things we have to consider while choosing a general if there is a comparison between mass and impact factor? Which one we should take? What I believe, I have not seen the NAS rating, yes, but uh, I think once upon uh, once I had a chance to look into the NAS rating, which is not very great as the GCI rating. So I think that's why I told you, if you look at the impact factor in your area, if the impact factor high, I'm sure the NAS rating will be would have been a high for that general. I'm sure like post harvest biology or food chemistry or science or horticulture, if you look, these are the top generals in horticulture area. So I'm sure they, they place very high ranking in the NAS. Because NAS, is, the NAS, they have not created their own ranking. NAS ranking is based on these generals' ranking. Understand? So NAS is just very applicable to very Indian aspect. And the, but the, these GCI ranking is overall aspect of the global aspect, you know? Their quality is better than the NAS one. Okay? So you see, it's a comparison between NAS and the impact factor. So of course, if those GCI impact factor is high, the NAS rating will be also high. It's rule of thumb. Yes, sir, Dr. C. T. Sandipalad. Uh, sir, the value of alt metric uh, can be compared with the H index value. Alt metrics can be compared with the H index value. No, I said earlier, these are, you cannot replace the H index value. These are going to supplement. You understand? Like my my attendance is 30, let's say I'm applying for some job, something what they will do is the Google, not if everyone Google it first, even even, even your children, see everyone, they want to get the superficial knowledge, you know, if you want to get the any definition, just Google things, you will get things. So this is what happened with that Google is okay, Professor Asghar Ali, they can Google it and they can see that, and then you can see some information there. So these values, these ultrametrics just add on to your supplements to your H index. It cannot replace your H index. For the jobs or for promotion or for getting the grant, but it can add value. Like I said, even we do gum Arabic quotings, we already published, got good citations, but it also appeared in National Geography, which is a very reputable magazine, uh, and, uh, and we also publish in Star newspaper. So that is going to give okay for the wider audience, like audience who are not academic, who can read on newspaper, and he will find out okay, there is someone within this university doing some research on that. That's all. It's not very scientifically proven a record for your quality. But if for the wider audience is to know that yes, you are good in this money, you did something. That is only a supplements to your H index. It's not complement. Uh, so the next question is, uh, hmm. sir, what is the difference between NAUS rating and JCS rating? Oh, that's why it's a rating, you know, like like India, when you buy something, it's like ISI rating. Is this still there, correct? When you buy a utensil or something like that? Even you buy a computer, they will give you. There is a there, there is agency who certified that this is of good quality. So that is called as a ISI rating, rating, right? But there is also a rating which is a global mandate. That is the difference between the NAS rating and the JCR is the international platform. Look into the quality of all the generals and give the JCR rating, general citation index. Where the NAS rating is created by Indian people to developed by ASRB Agriculture Sciences Recruitment Board. I think it was not there earlier, but somehow some guys that sit together and I think it's a monopoly. I would say it's a monopoly. Some people they say that okay now they're following the NAS rating. I don't see any point looking into NAS rating where there is already have an international rating for the generals, which I showed to you, JCR rating. This is already Q1 generals, global aspect. So these are the very good ratings. Or I am sure these NAS rating, all those who sit together, sat together last time in the SRB and they say this is a rating. So it's based on this JCR rating. Maybe in the NAS rating, what I can see the difference is some of the Indian generals might place some higher rank, like Indian general of agronomy, correct? In the global platform, it's not that great. But NASA rating, maybe they have given more rate to the Indian General of Agronomy or Indian General of Horticulture. Is there an Indian General of Horticulture? Uh, if there is, so they will give more rating to Indian General of Horticulture, Indian General of Agronomy, which are good general, which are very, very good general. Indian General of Agronomy, really, I, I like a lot of what a good thing they are doing in agronomy in crop science area. So you can see that they have given slightly more weightage to Indian General of Agronomy. But the what negative point I can see that if people, let's say a lot of questions coming here for the NAS rating. I've given a lot of talk earlier also. People are asking the similar question about the NAS rating. So people are so confused with the NAS rating. Everyone following the NAS rating. What will the, what is the uh, worrying point is that everybody want to publish in Indian General of Agronomy rather than European General of Agronomy. Understand my point? So you are restricting yourself. Why are you restricting yourself? Because you want a promotion. 
maybe if you publish in Indian Journal of Economy, it's easy to publish when you publish European Journal of Economy or International Journal of Economy. But due to the NAS rating, they have given a high ranking. Okay, you can publish 10 paper in Indian Journal of Economy and you become professor there. So that's why restricting yourself. So as a scientist, I would say that you don't fall much for the NAS rating. I think to be very frank, those who are more than 55 years old or 50 years old, they can go for NAS rating. I won't bother. But the young scientists, I think you should follow the JCR ranking. So you compete with the global, uh, global platform rather than the Indian platform. So it is like a different agency giving the rating. NAS is, is developed by Indian scientists. A GCR is the International Global Platform for Thomson Reuters. Thom you know Thomson Reuters. So they rank the journal. NAS rating ranked by the Indian scientists. Uh, sir, the next question is uh, regarding altimetrics. Sir, you have mentioned the in internal communication between universities such as mm -hmm. appraisal accounts for altimetrics. I mm -hmm. can understand the tweets download online are countable, but mm -hmm. how is a physical document countable? Do we need to upload it? Or still further? Uh, yeah. So do, do we need to upload it? Is there any website for sharing it? No, correct, correct, correct. I think it's a very valid question to Indian continent because a lot of things are not digital. Like I know, because I graduated from India, a lot of like you know, different patrika, you know, magazines, local level magazine, like Ascension Worker does the job, one place pamphlet, you go to the agriculture area or KVKs. So they produce a lot of leaflets. So that is also a kind of altrometrics. If it is not digitally available, you can upload on the Facebook. You can tweet it. You cannot. You can upload on the different media. You can make a blog out of that, and you can see because these magazines also have some number. You know, IESSN number or whatever the number. So you can do that one. What you can upload in the social media that is also counted as altimetrics. But it's not in the digital form. It's in the paper form. Especially in the country, like a lot of Patrika, KVK guys, they do a lot. It's a lot. You know, they produce one pay like Unnat Kheti, Krishi, right? Or something like Shimla Mirch Ugane Ke. You know, normally we produce this kind of articles, right? But that is very useful. That is also article, that is also ultrametrics. So, and I know these are the guys, India, they do a lot of things. You can upload this one on social media and you can make use of that. That is ultrametrics. That makes you more popular. Why are we making the local knowledge and digital media? Because uh, we are in the agriculture area. We are working in the, we are working in the agriculture university. So we go and go to the village area where the English is not a good uh, way of communication. So you, you, sometimes you make in the local languages, correct? Especially KVK guys and extension guys. So this is also one kind of ultrametrics. This will be countable. But again, I said it is not, it is only supplements. So the another question is, uh, sir, kindly suggest some tips to write a good paper for authentic journals. Most uh -huh. by Nauram Vidyalam. Yeah, okay. This is a good question. I think these are some ways you need to write to, you need to synthesize your thought first, you know. First thing, you need to do a good research. And then, and then you have to write a good paper on that. But it can be other way around. If, may, if, you, if your research is not that great, but how you write it, it also makes a matter, you know. So this one, I think Dr. Wasim is going to talk about it. And then maybe I can talk some um, other times, you know, this is a very important topic, how to write a good paper in authentic journals. You need to know the aims and scope of the paper first whether whatever the work you have done, whether it is applicable or to do that particular general. First thing, very, very important. If it is applicable, then you need to read a lot of papers on that particular area and synthesize your results in that one. I know there are some tips, I think very difficult to say now. I think Dr. Wasim is going to talk about this uh, good paper for authentic journals. The main thing, you, you should fall into the scope of that general first. You know, you have to understand that you cannot publish something on Pothar or Balaji while you are going, working on it, growing the chili. Whatever the good quality of uh, work while you are doing on growing the chili, because it's not relevant to the Pothar or Balaji. It's only uh, just a post-harvest thing, you know. So it is very important it has to be relevant to the particular general. So you need to know and where you start, the proposal making is very, very important, whether you are a master's or PhD, or even if you are a lecturer or professor, you need to synthesize your thoughts in a very good manner, very um, logical manner, means that you can see there is some novelty there, there is a good point, there is a very good justification of your work, either you go to change the methodology. Novel work means there is some confusion, I was talking to somebody 
in another university i was giving talks there is always confusion they think that novel work means something new no we are not going to do something new we are not going to bring something from the sky novel means that it's not necessarily novel work it's novel is also it also shows the novelty how you do the work is also novelty i'm working on edible coatings and films for the last decades and still my work is relevant so what is important here is that when you do the edible coating i'm doing like gum arabic and phytoes and based edible coating for enhancing shelf life of the fruits and vegetables so but how i apply this coating and this application is going to affect the quality of the product if somebody like you you want to do some i think there is a lot of noise there can i ask okay so if somebody want to do a novel it doesn't mean that you have to develop a new coating itself what he has to do he has to read the paper carefully and you have to find the point okay he has done in this way he is using this method to apply the coating on the food surface if i change this way to something else like he is using the spray fine mist or i can make into nano edible coating so i can make a nano size which can penetrate faster so that is also a novelty so you need to think it's not like something novel your application wise if you can change the application and that application is going to change the effect of your and product of your fresh produce that is also novelty so proposal making is very very important so you have to think very carefully i think people are always worried about let's go start in the lab i tell my students you know i have three phd students i graduated almost like 20 students by my 14 years of care. so why do i spend a lot of time they spend a lot of time on reading literatures that is very very important once you synthesize like you you are learning a bicycle ride it may take some time to ride a bicycle but what you know once you know the riding the bicycle is very very easy to cover the 10 km but some people they are undergo, they want to learn the bicycle they didn't learn properly and then they want to run the bicycle for 20 km and then they are they don't know how to run the properly then you are taking a lot of time to do the carry out the research so important thing is important thing is to spend more time on literature understanding preparing proposals once you know learn, you learn everything then you have to just execute the project that will come very faster so three, three years of phd most of my phd is completed in three years so the one year first year they will be slow but second year third year they will be very fast they conduct everything in the lab so this is the way you how you synthesize the proposal that is also important okay uh, sir give your mail id please i think oh did i put my email id in the no if i i will give my email id it's very simple you just type my name in google asgar.ali at nottingham.edu.my i will type it here if this is my email id you can see that so okay what else Uh, sir, few more questions are there. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Just you can answer it. Uh, I think another three minutes to go. Okay, another no problem. Another three minutes to go. Uh, can we prepare research article with review articles in terms of uh, JCS and NOS rating? Is it okay to publish more review article in a high JCS or NOS rating and few research articles? Wow, this is a very, very good question. Very, very good question. A very valid questions. Yeah, this is something very important for the young researcher, PhD student, and this is also very important for the experienced researcher. Means that I would say that if uh, uh, I have a five PhD student, I will expect at least five review article, one at least one review article from each student. Why? Because this is going to be a core of your research. If, like I said earlier, if you are doing a research, you need to do the background study. But ground study is means collecting the review of literature. So you should have enough knowledge you can cover in your area for the last five years what research has been done. Even sometimes 10, 10 years, or I would say if you can collect it, if you're edible coating, what people have done across the globe in the last 10 years in the edible coating, that's, and you are going to work on edible coating, and then you change your review of literature, second chapter of your thesis, into the review, uh, review article, that will be great. It is often advisable to convert your review article into uh, convert your literature of review into the review article and that will give you also insight what's going on that will be put you go deeper inside what has been happening what the problem was what happened in that particular reporting what was the problem why they this result didn't came out that is the review article you no know? so always convert your research uh, review of literature of review into the review article so is it okay to publish more review article in the high jcs or not rating and the few research is, is, is perfectly fine perfectly fine but you have to be a very balanced portfolio if you are a good researcher 
The difference between review article and the uh, research article is that research article, you, this is more on scientific article. Review article, maybe somebody who knows the very good language from literature of English, he understand English very well, and you give him a material maybe, or you can ask the newspaper editor, they're very good in editing things. You can give the piece of papers of this particular topic, they can write review articles. These always have to put a balance between the review articles and the research articles. That is really important. So as a student, I would prefer at least you should have one review article review, literature of review. If you are doing a PhD, that should be converted into review articles. If you are writing any review article, please email me, tell me your background, how you got my contact. I will help you to help you on the writing this one. And that can be converted into a review article in a very good journal. The review article is collecting the proper data for the last 10 years. Review article is not easy. You have to do some very hard work to know what went wrong, what went right. Both things, critical analysis, what is good and what is bad in particular area, what's going on, then you can synthesize a good review article. So could there there be any... Sir, could you be Yeah. Could there be any chance that noise rating is very high, but the impact factor is very low or vice versa? Like I've given you one example, why NAS has been created by the ASRB guys to promote their, it's just like a monopoly. Like I said, Indian Journal of Agronomy might have high rating as compared to some good journal in internationally. Correct? And that's why everybody's talking about the NAS rating. Like maybe European Journal of Agronomy, which also published a paper in Agronomy, Indian Journal of Agronomy. So maybe Indian Journal of Agronomy is a better rating than the European Journal of Agronomy. But if you look at the JCI one, you can see the Inter European Journal of Agronomy is a better rating than the Indian Journal of Agronomy. But this might happen, but it's not the very obvious case. That is, it cannot be very obvious. So you full follow JCI and you can check what is the NAS rating accordingly in that particular uh, NAS rating. It may happen, it may happen, but rarely happen. It's not the wider, well, it, it's not like across the board. It's very low or vice versa. It can happen, but it's not uh, very obvious. The next question is, uh, how co-authorship as a second or third author in a paper affects your overall profile in Google Scholar or Research Scholar? How co-authorship impact your index? How co-authorship as second or third author in a paper affects your overall profile in a Google Scholar or Research Scholar? How co-authorship impact your index? First thing, that is the limitation. I showed you, I think this point I already covered in my presentation. Okay, that is the problem with the, uh, that is the problem with the, actually, this is the limit, one of the limitation of H index. Okay, either you're a single author or co-author or three author, it's not going to, it's not going to give you credit on whether it is a two author written paper or three author written paper. If three authors or five authors are there, everyone get the index accordingly. So everyone will get the equal rights to show their H index. The co-authorship doesn't matter for the H index. Yes. Both of it matters, like if some of the jobs you apply, they can see like at least some papers you have first row authors. Because that if you are a published, you are a PhD student, you are, a, you are going for assistant professorship, you are, you, at least if we expect you to at least few papers as you as a first author. Means that you have done your research. First author means the, those who have already done the research work. Or review paper, those who really synthesize the research work, that become the first author. Like if you become the professor, the first author doesn't matter. It's matter the most probably last author or the contract author means the address of correspondence. Address of correspondence. So that is very important for the authors, those who have like the contract points. And this is the grant holder. I, I published some papers for my grants, so I put like contract authors. If any queries regarding that public, particular research is come to me. So and I so people will understand this. I'm the contract author means I have the in charge of that particular grant. So co-authorship is not going to uh, affect your inter uh, if you're index, no. We will, uh, uh, regarding the altimetric, so sir, you have mentioned, okay, that it is over, I think. Yeah, it's over. I think most of the questions are answered, sir. Okay. Most of the questions are answered. Okay, I really enjoyed Thank you this talk. Much, for your yeah. uh, excellent presentation and you woke up in the morning. I think there was a time difference uh, between Malaysia and India. And uh, yeah, uh, yeah. we have started 10, I think it will be around 8.30 or 8.30. There it's around uh, no, no. 7.30 or 8. Uh, uh, yeah, we are, I'm two, hour, two and a half hours ahead. That's fine. Very good timing for me.
oh. yeah two and a half hours ahead i really yeah. enjoyed the talk and thank you so, for giving me opportunity yeah so thanks to to the dean and the people who are the organizing committee i'd like to thanks to all of you for inviting me and giving a talk hopefully we can interact physically if any type of collaborations i'm very happy to do. i think you all of guy all of you guys from horticulture that is my area i'm very happy for the joint collaborations yes, joint sir. research a joint project proposals joint supervisions or external examiners anything please write to me and don't hesitate if you don't hear me then again you reach and me email sometimes too many email in my inbox don't think that i'm not i'm going to be rude not going to reply you but i will reply it, it may take some time or you can call me so any type of collaboration i'm very open thank you very much i really enjoyed this session thanks to everyone thank you very much sir uh, for right. uh, sparing your valuable time and nourishing our students with uh, how to publish it and importance of h uh, index and scopers and other sir uh, before take a leave uh, i would like to take a photo on the uh, screen so i request everyone to start to the video not don't uh, unmute it all the participant i request everyone to uh, start your video only not to the audio you would like to take a photo uh, so oh, okay. there are around seven pages i think yeah. it automatically it will how to uh, load how it, it come all together streaming yeah yeah it, it, it will come all uh, start your video i can see start only your talk. video i'm taking print yeah please send to me also yeah yeah sure sir all the videos are not coming together yeah just can you all of you start your video i think most of the videos are not on yeah yeah some of them are there <laughs> Oh yeah. To come all participants together. Thank you very much, sir. All the participants, please uh, join with us at two uh, thirty for the next session. Uh, thank you very much. I'll end now. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Talk to you later on. तू बोल रही है क्या अच्छे लगते हैं ये बातें ना नहीं 